please wear shoes in my office, mermaid lady. That doesn't really mean anything to me. Hi there, this is Cole here with more Hex Crank Live. Starting up a new game, The Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker. This is a modern FMV game where you play as, I believe, a psychiatrist with uh, supernatural powers. This is by the same people or it has some of the same uh, the same personnel as Contradiction. Spot the con spot the clue. Contradiction. Spot the contradiction. You know, another thing. So I don't know much about this aside from what I heard from Jala when she talked about it on the level. So the best way to get started is to get started. The faculty thinks I've gone loopy, like <coughs> some kind of spongy Mobius strip. That's why I'm here, isn't it, Dr. Decker? I can see people's dreams. I've uh, set up an experiment. My dad is trying to hurt me. Quantum suicide. Have you heard of it? If I concentrate hard enough, and I know when the person's going to be asleep, I can have the dream with them. Well, let's call him God. He creates this world for his amusement, something he can play with and occasionally alter to suit his mood. It feels like the paintings are watching me. Sometimes when I walk through a door, it takes me somewhere else, literally somewhere else. God loves chaos, but something goes wrong. Man and woman involved. What was once chaotic, becomes well, more ordered. It starts as a door-to-door -door saleswoman. Double blazing, probably. Dr. Decker, I think we both know what you dreamed about last night. I've seen its silhouette changing through the window. Because he thinks I'm evil. Because I can see things other people can't. On the basis, the central component of our universe is chaos. Science can only document a perception of the chaos at any one given moment in time. I did what you said, Doctor. They arrested me. Which means that at any given moment, we can choose to alter our perception of the world, no matter how much chaos that would cause. I thought you were supposed to fix me. I'm telling you, it's eating people. And you're just laughing. You're insane. Listen to me! You're not listening! It's your only bloody job! Yeah, it's a cast of characters. Doctor, you're late. And after all those promises, never mind, Doctor. let's not keep the pace. You're late. And after all those Doctor. promises. Doctor, you're late. Doctor, you're and late. after all those. And after all those promises, never mind. <laughs> this looks cool. Doctor, you're late. And after all those promises, mm, never mind. Let's not keep the patients waiting. And if you want anything, just... Oh, sorry. I forgot. I'm not going to be here. The police still have some questions they want to ask <coughs> about, you know. And then after that, I'm dropping in to see Ben. He's still in shock, and I thought we'd show we cared. We do still care, don't we, Doctor? Good. Anyway, I hope you're all caught up on Dr. Decker's tapes. I think Mariana is in first, but I'm sure they'll all become a blur by the end of the day. I'll see you later. Or tomorrow. Uh, probably tomorrow. I'll leave it to you then. Hmm. So I'm picking up where Dr. Decker left off. Okay, patient names have dots next to them. Red means keep talking to them. Amber means you're done. Um, 
green is you've asked everything, going green is optional. Watch replays in the responses tab, look for stars. So I couldn't, <coughs> excuse me. Try using your patient's words. I'm Ellen, I'm 25 and I'm a nurse. Typing nurse will get a response. Huh, that's a wrinkle. Include a yes or no when answering patients. Use context to say, yes, I like cats, not yes. Going green is intentionally hard. Hints will be required. Set hint cooldown and options. Okay, huh. This is a little bit uh, more fluid than I thought. I remember Jala talking about uh, typing things. First, though, hey there, Greater J. Hi, Jala. Andrew. Hoxai. JMH. Zach. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, Teak. Yeah, just, let's just say Teak. Um, so, Mariana has an exclamation mark next to her. So let's try that. I'm Mariana. Are you feeling okay? Uh, yes, I am feeling okay. That's what Dr. Decker would say. What brings you here today? I don't have an answer for that. Hmm, okay. Let's see, my notes. Dr. Decker was <clears throat> fine. He had good relationships with his patients, as far as I know. I'm not sure why anyone would want him dead. How did Dr. Decker die? Ooh. Dr. Decker was fine. He had good relationships with his patients, as far as I know. I'm not sure what Okay, uh Jealous says there are pre-made questions. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then I can do my own on top of that. There we go. Well, that's why so, you're here, isn't it? Do you know anything You've about the murder? Him. He was a good listener. I hope you are. What does it mean? A good listener. Dr. Decker could really get inside you. It was, uh, unsettling. But you let him do it. Part of the process, I guess. I mean, tell me more about his process. Nope. Don't know. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. So let's see more. I think you're supposed to tell me what's wrong with me. Isn't that how it works? The police keep picking me up for public nudity. Huh. Why do you get nude? I black out. And then the next thing I remember, I'm naked on the beach. Like I've been washed up on shore. Nobody's pressed charges yet, but I can feel it. 
The police are getting suspicious. Huh. I do suffer do you from often black blackouts, out? which is strange, as I can hold my breath for a really long time. But I'm not swimming before I black out. Dr. Decker thought it was anxiety originally. Then he worked it out. What did Dr. Decker say about your blackouts? Hmm. Now, what did he work out? He eventually decided it wasn't anxiety, but I'm not going to tell you his final diagnosis. We should have a fresh start. I don't want you influenced by the prognosis. Hmm. No, but really, prognosis, please? Thank you in advance. I want to stop having the blackouts. I want to stop waking up at the beach. I want to remember those entire evenings. Can you suggest anything that might help? Intern, huh? I work for myself. I make bracelets from things I find on the beach and sell them online. I spend a lot of time at the beach. It's just way more relaxing than anywhere else. You should come with me one day. I can show you all the sights. Tell me about your necklace. I have no idea about that. It's right there, you know, around your neck. I don't know about that. <laughs> What's the deal with your medallion? No, I don't know about that. Yo, that an octopus twixt your bosoms? I don't know. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Um, <laughs> Dr. Decker thought I had generalized anxiety disorder. GAD? because of the blackouts. He thought I was breathing badly. Do you think I'm breathing badly? What's the difference between breathing good and breathing bad? You can check my breathing if you want. Do you want me to lie down? Can you tell just by looking at me? I'm not worried about it, just if you are. Please, ma'am, let's keep this professional. That's not really helping with my blackouts. Okay. I'm not sure holding my breath too long is causing blackouts. I mean, it could, but I don't remember ever having a blackout when I'm holding my breath. Hmm. So she holds her breath. How long? How long can you hold your breath? No, that's not innuendo. That doesn't really mean anything to me. How long can you hold your breath? That doesn't mean anything to me. <clears throat> This is a very good venue for comedy. <laughs> um, Frost Circus. Hey, Frost Circus. Also, hi, Casca. Man, uh, it's bumping in here today. <laughs> um, Frost Circus asks, uh, have I tried phasing in and out of existence? It's important to meet people on their level. 
Um, I'm going to phase out of existence now. That doesn't mean anything to me. I normally black out when I'm dancing. I like dancing. Do you like dancing? What is your favorite dance? I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I can say this. Dancing is good for you in so many ways. Just turn the music up, close your eyes, and let yourself go. You should try it sometime. Please wear shoes in my office, mermaid lady. That doesn't really mean anything to me. I dance a lot at nightclubs. <clears throat> I know most of the nightclubs around here. My favorite is the Pearl because they sell cheap vodka shots all night. How much do you drink? I don't have an answer for that. I don't drink. <laughs> That's obviously a lie, ma'am. You think my dancing causes my blackouts? No, I know it's the last thing I remember, but I don't think it's that. Sometimes I remember more, but... I'm tired now. <laughs> Is that it for today? I film myself doing, um, lots of things, but it's not so easy to do when you're blocked out. Will you do it for me? Will you watch me to see what happens? So, it's a date then. I'll let you know when. That is highly unethical. Please leave immediately and pay at the desk. That's not really helping with my blackouts. <laughs> okay, um, Jala is ripping her hair out because I need to talk to somebody else. So let's, uh, let's talk to Bryce. See what Bryce up to. Oh, uh, is he the guy who thinks he's God? I'm Bryce Hemmings. Oh, he's a kid. You must be the new doctor. Did you know Dr. Decker? No, I did not know Dr. Decker. He was an antagonistic psycho. I hope you're not from the same school of thought. Why do you dislike Dr. Decker? I don't have anything for you. Meh. <laughs> I didn't really like Dr. Decker, and for quite a few reasons, actually. I'd rather talk about my own problems for now, though, if you don't mind. I'm trying to solve a murder, sir. What do you know about? about the murder. Yes, Dr. Decker was murdered. Kel surprise. Murder does seem a bit harsh, doesn't it? And another grave to dig. I know as much about it as you do. Less, I would imagine. It's a weird statement, so... Dr. Decker would say one thing and do another. He would push me to do things I didn't want to do. He was getting worse towards the end. I'm surprised he didn't kill himself. Hmm. 
why would Dr. Decker commit suicide? He wasn't a good man. I don't know how he could live with himself. Perhaps he couldn't. Originally, I was suffering with depression. Work was piling up. I, I kept missing deadlines. I wasn't used to all the failure. I got depressed. Hmm, okay. I'm a grave digger, Doctor. And people are dying quicker than we can bury them. Hey there, random sum. And Double Dexter. Double Dexter asks, when were these games, these FMV games popular? Um, 90s, late 80s. There's a bit of a miniature comeback. Why is he taking, oh, is, is he taking a drink or is he taking a picture of me? You'd think being a grave digger <laughs> had its perks, but it can be very stressful. There's a trend going towards burial rather than cremation again. And as well as running out of space, we're running out of competent grave diggers. At least ones that can use a shovel, that is. I'm not feeling anywhere near as depressed as I used to, though. Not since I got the extra hour. Extra hour, huh? Do you know sick shovel tricks? Henley Church, where I work, is located on an old Norman Mott and Bailey. You can't use mechanical diggers or excavators there in case you destroy a relic. <laughs> okay. What kind of relics have you found? I stumbled across a relic myself. An ancient chess piece. A queen, I believe. The best chess piece. The most freedom of movement. But they took it away immediately and proclaimed the whole east side of Henley Church a protected site of archaeological importance, which means we're not allowed to use it until the archaeologists have finished. I wish I hadn't told anyone. Do you play a lot of chess? I like chess. I still play sometimes when I can find an opponent. There's nothing more satisfying than planning scores of moves in advance and then watching things unfold as you saw them. I shouldn't have told anyone about the Queen. Hmm. Tell me about the extra hour. I'm not sure what you're asking me. Can, can you be more specific? Hmm. At midnight each day, time as you know it freezes. In my world, it just slows down to almost <laughs> a stop. But I don't. I'm free to wander around and do as I please. An hour later, normal reality continues. It's my very own midnight hour. Cool. Uh, what kind of things do you do at midnight? I know you're asking questions to try and get a bearing, but I'd rather not talk about that now. Let's just enjoy the getting to know you phase before the ugliness kicks in. Hmm. Thank you for subscribing, Cascaboom. Okay, so... It's a bizarre thing to know you have an extra hour every day. I rarely ever sleep until after midnight now, so I can appreciate the extra time. I get a lot of work done in that time. I'm completely caught up. The depression is no longer an issue. 25 hours is a blessing for me. But apparently, it's not real, and I'm insane for thinking it is. Hmm. What do you think, Doctor? I'm not sure what to think. Is that something I should know about? Uncertainty? I thought it would be too early to make a diagnosis, but it's good you're having a go anyway. In the extra hour, I mainly catch up with work. It's a godsend. Sometimes I play chess against myself. It relaxes and strengthens the mind all at once. How can playing chess against yourself be satisfying? Henley Church is relatively small. Well, 
for the number of bodies they expect us to pack into the ground it's relatively small. The whole building was once owned by Scientologists, but they handed it back to the community as a tax break, I believe, or they'd finished doing whatever it was they wanted to do with it. Okay, Jal is telling me that my decisions about their psychoses are significant. That is all. Okay, well. Ooh, Scientology. I'm not sure I believe in any religion anymore. I used to believe in God. Not anymore. There are too many religions to pick from, don't you think? Hmm. No. Then we disagree. Have you watched Zeitgeist, Doctor? <laughs> Some of it is believable, and the part about most religions stemming from the same basic facts. It's more likely that they've all got it wrong than one of them has it right, in my opinion. <laughs> cool. Can I change my answer? I do like to be in control, but then I suppose most people do. Nobody wants life to carry them along helplessly. Everyone wants to kick against it and make their own way. Do you like to be in control, Doctor? If you like being in control, you'll have a tough time here. I saw it with Dr. Decker. Such control, such stability. But he unraveled at the end. Hmm. He couldn't keep unravel? control of everything, of everyone. He just set us up like dominoes, but we all toppled in unexpected ways. You'll find it all out in time, Doctor. Just not today. Can't have your head exploding, can we? <laughs> Why would my head explode? That doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> okay. So let's talk to Claire. My name is Claire Castleford, and as I'm paying a small fortune for these sessions, I'd expect you to be up to speed, Doctor. <laughs> Being a witch has its perks, but honestly, I would give it all up in a heartbeat if it could free me from this madness. Okay, so what's her madness? So why are we here? Well, according to your predecessor, I'm a delusional psychotic with obsessive tendencies. Oh, and a history of violence. <laughs> Sounds so cold when you put it like that, though, doesn't it? Uh, hey kids, do you like violence? I don't understand what you're getting at, Doctor. Please be more specific. I'm obsessed with my husband. It's absurd, really. Hmm. Tell me about your husband. Oh. Because he is here. <coughs> and he shouldn't be. Um, why shouldn't He's lucky he be, to be here? Alive. He almost died. How did your your husband oh wait no let's try this did you try to kill your husband I think we'd get along a lot better if you stuck to asking me one question at a time oh weird my husband is not a well man we've been having problems for a while now what kind of problem his health if you can call it that, has been deteriorating rapidly in the last few weeks. I can't cope with caring for him anymore. Caretaker... Caretaker fatigue is a thing? Since our altercation, he's become less and less active. His mind's become less and less active too. Such a delightful conversationalist at one time, now more of an enigmatic husk. What altercation? I tried to hurt David once. That's why I'm here, isn't it? I'm not proud of my behavior, but I was very angry. 
It was a private matter, though. The police should never have been involved. David has trouble looking after himself. Sometimes I'll leave the lake house and he's just sitting in the rocking chair on the porch. And when I return the next evening, he's still there, just staring into the stars. He needs help, I know, but I can't hire anybody to care for him. But aren't you rich? No. Hmm. Why can't you hire help? I don't understand what you're getting mm. at, Doctor. Please be more specific. Just let me push at the edges. David's staying at the lake house. It belonged to my parents, but I don't use it much anymore. I have the main house to myself. To be fair, there was only one violent outburst that hardly qualifies as a history of violence. And he provoked me. Who provoked you? It was a brief moment of temporary insanity. Or temporary clarity, I'm not really sure which. David had been having an affair with his assistant optician, Iris. <laughs> How predictable. Not just the affair, but an optician named Iris. <laughs> Tell me about Iris. Iris was David's assistant optician. Not anymore. No, not like that. I didn't kill her or anything. <laughs> it's just that I changed the optician into a florist after David died. Optometry was his dream, not mine. After David died? Keep up, Doctor. David is my husband. <sighs> I stabbed him with a steak knife. Shocking, isn't it? Where did you stab him? <laughs> Illusions. As in, seeing things that are not there. I'm not going to be any more specific. It's not true in any case. I'm not delusional. What do you do when time freezes every night if I knew anything about that I'd tell you but I don't that was double Dexter's suggestion I never used to get angry ever if you're angry you're not in control isn't that right and it would be very bad for me to lose control hmm why would it be bad to lose control Let's save that for another time, shall we? I'm rich, but I'm not made of money, and I'm fairly sure my time is up. The most shocking thing about Dr. Decker's death is that he didn't bring it upon himself. But then I hadn't known him for a very long time. Perhaps I was wrong about him. How did you get Dr. Decker wrong? Hmm. The police seem to think I'm dangerous. I'm only sitting here talking to you because I have a lot of money. Otherwise, there's no doubt I'd be thrown into prison for a very long time. That's why I need your help, Doctor. What kind of help do you need? I need you to believe me. That's why I'm paying for these sessions. Everyone else thinks I'm crazy and dangerous. Everyone else thinks I've lost my mind. Huh. I assume they think I'm dangerous because I stabbed my husband. Okay, fair enough. I suppose after what I did, there are people that might think I belonged in prison. What do you think, Doctor? Can I be saved with therapy, or should I be locked up like a dangerous criminal? Dr. Decker just had that look about him. You know what they say about us crazies. Takes one to know one. Why do you think Dr. Decker was crazy? They think I'm seeing things, making things up. I don't want to talk about it. 
Oh. So I don't want to render judgment based on Jala's based on Jala's advice. Uh, so let's talk to Ellen. I'm Elin. I'm Elin. 25 and I'm a nurse. God, I sound like I'm on one of those dating shows. No dating show has been on the air in many years. I'm not really looking for love at the moment. I'm sort of married to my work, but in a good way. Okay. I work in a nursing home for the elderly. I basically do end of life care. What is end of the life usual care? usual things. Making sure the patients are comfortable, making sure they're not in any pain, and I talk to them. I keep them company. Some of them get pretty frightened about what's coming. Well, those of them that aren't out of it on meds. I comfort them. Hmm. Death is frightening, isn't it? Isn't it what everyone's afraid of? The great unknown. No one should have to face that alone. I don't like it when patients are heavily sedated, especially when there are alternatives like herbal remedies. Mm. I mean, imagine if you only had a few days or weeks left to live. Would you want to spend it asleep? Huh. I'm a qualified herbalist. It's okay, you can laugh. Most people think herbalism is a joke. But I'd much rather help my patients sleep at night with valerian or passion flower than lorazepam, tamazepam or zolpidem. You made that last one up. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Uh, let's see here. Yes, I would like to see. I wouldn't. I'd want to see every sunrise and every sunset. I'd want to feel every breath. Everything gets more vivid near death. How do you know? I haven't really got anything to say about that. Maybe we should talk about you. Um, huh. Are people having trouble seeing the video? I started seeing Dr. Decker a few months ago. I thought it would be nice to have someone I could talk to about work. It can get a bit stressful sometimes. Hmm. It can be sad sometimes. I don't like losing a patient. But that's the job. I don't get stressed about it or anything. Hmm. But you're lying. It's not the job that stresses me. It's the people I work with. The other nurses. They're mean to me. How are they mean? They call me the angel of death because so many patients have died on my shift. I don't think they mean it. Obviously, it's not my fault. It just seems to happen that way. Um... But, but really, though... You do it, right? I don't know. Sorry. Hmm, okay. Mm, three last month. Three the month before that, I think. But only one so far this month, so that's good. Although, one of my patients, Hilda, 
I don't think she's got long. What's wrong with Hilda? She's one of the crotchety ones. <laughs> Always swearing and spitting at me. Never got anything nice to say. Thinks we're going to smother her in her sleep or something. She doesn't bother me, though. Spit back. Jungle rules, baby. Awoo! I'm really bad at this, aren't I? <laughs> Ask me something else. <laughs> Terry's one of the other nurses at the home. I don't think she likes me very much. Okay, what's Terry's problem? Yeah, keywords, weird. Tell me about Terry. Who is Terry? Hmm. I've known a lot of doctors over the years. Most of them arrogant idiots who think nurses are just there to do their bidding, or worse. Dr. Decker was different. He had a lot of time for me. He was interested in my problems. Hmm. He was a bit offbeat, but yeah, I liked him. But then I like most people. That's an interesting thing to say. Uh, I'd been seeing him for about nine months, I think. I think it's terrible what happened to him. So awful. No one deserves to die like that. Hmm, how did he die? I'd really like to be able to answer you, but I don't know what to say. Oh, okay. I'm not quite clear. <laughs> the consensus in chat is that this lady is uh, dangerous. It's not good that she's called the Angel of Death, is what they say. Also, hey there, Equus. And hi there, Wink. Let's see what Nathan up to. Um, tell me about Decker. Dr. Decker was a complex man. I spent a lot of time with him. He won't remember it that way. What? <laughs> as far as Dr. Decker was concerned, we had Monday, then moved on to Tuesday. But me, I had Monday five, ten, fifty times before I got to Tuesday. Okay. Groundhog Day, bitches. I watched that Bill Murray film, Groundhog Day. <laughs> what? To see if there's any clues. <laughs> To see if there's any clues. That's how bad it's gone. I'm looking for a cure in a Hollywood movie. Can you help me, Doctor? <laughs> Alright, that's really good. <laughs> that is... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, let's try I don't know how, but thank you, Doctor. This this is our first time around, and I trust you. <sighs> man, oh man. Sorry, that caught me way off guard. I saw the conflict that Dr. Decker was going through. Let's just say you might look back on your life and think there's nothing you would have done differently. No two days were alike for him, in the end. Like, he couldn't decide what to do with himself. Huh. He was like a kid in a sweet shop. He had so many options, he didn't know what to do. I suppose if you take too long picking, all your options run away. This guy has a really flat affect. 
Hey there, Chicken Riggies. I'm Nathan Peel. I'm a supermarket worker from, well, hell, really. <laughs> hell, huh? How's the weather in hell? I imagine what I'm experiencing now might be a type of hell. Not everyone burns in flames with the devil on their back. I'm hoping you can make sense of my problem. It's like those montages you get in movies. Time passes, you wake up, shave, if you feel like it, shower, get dressed, what's the point? You get this day over and over, nothing changes. Am I in purgatory, Doctor? Hmm. Because I'm stuck between this day and the next, most of the time, anyway. How many times have we had this conversation? I don't have anything to say about that. Mmm, playing coy, huh? Sometimes it looks different. Sometimes the bird song will change, or, or the weather will be less bleak. Or, the, or that person who nodded at you yesterday doesn't, doesn't do it today. But it doesn't usually change. You need a tragic event for change. Like a murder. Murder is a strange word to bring up out of nowhere. Dr. Decker's murder was sudden. Brutal. It's terrible. But doctor... Two weeks. Two weeks I had of rolling days. No do-overs. No Monday, Monday, Monday. I wouldn't kill anyone, though. I'd have to keep doing it, wouldn't I? Few things seem to move me forward. Hmm. I didn't see the driver. It was my fault. I pulled out, and the lorry just rammed me. Well, Hannah. She was sat next to me. I was in shock, obviously. And when I came to, she was... So close to me. It was like she was trying to hug me. But it wasn't right. Not natural. Bits of metal pushing through her. That was five years ago. And is that what started this? My fiance. My childhood sweetheart. We met at secondary school. She was head girl. <laughs> I was the quiet one. She liked computer games, so I instantly fell for her. I proposed in Goldshire. She said she didn't date elves, so I leveled up to a human necromancer and asked again. Sorry, it's Warcraft? We spent a lot of time on there. Alliance or Horde? No, sorry. I've been shrunk for that already. If I had that day again, I wouldn't make the same mistake. Hannah would still be alive. We'd probably have a family by now. Hmm. I haven't had any relationships since then. I was fine for quite a while after the accident. Well, being treated for depression. I thought I was cured. It was only recently after meeting Dr. Decker that I had a Strange deja vu. I'm exhausted. Doctor, is our time up? Hmm. Most of my days are blur. I'm not sure if it's the sleeping tablets I'm on or just how I've learned to switch off. Yeah, this is, uh, somebody earlier said that this sounds like depression. Uh, yeah. I'm on Tamazepam. Dr. Decker prescribed them for me. He thought I would sleep through to a whole new day. I didn't. Do you ever notice an extra hour? I don't know anything about it. We played World of Warcraft a lot together. I guess it's not the cool thing to do anymore. But we had a lot of memories there. To be honest, it reminds me a lot of life now. The same thing over and over again. 
Bring me X bunnies to make a stew. Y badger teeth. Rinse, repeat. Yeah, Maybe that's depression. Life. <laughs> Tell me about your depression. I do suffer from depression, but it's not very surprising, is it? I used to get fatigue, too. Just overwhelming tiredness. I don't really get that anymore. I've just learned to accept that this is my life now. Hmm. I'm not really fit for work anymore. I work in produce at the local supermarket. That mainly involves lifting heavy crates of fruit and veg into place for people to buy, and doing that over and over again. My muscles don't seem to have grown much. I think that maybe I'm not aging. When the day resets, I just reset with it. I used to be a builder. Builder, huh? I'm 57. <laughs> kidding. Just if you spent the whole day at the gym and then repeat that day and not go, you'd have achieved nothing. No, I can't move backwards any more than a day. I don't really seem to control it. It's generally always on. I have to try and change something to move forward. Huh, what do you need to change? Sorry. Got nothing. <sighs> Let me look at my notes. Or wait, there's a new button here. Continue. Go back to Bryce. This is... Okay. I'm pro-cremation, not just because I don't have to dig a grave. They still need a hole for the interment of ashes. It's more dignified, like you're becoming one with the universe again. Rotting in a wooden box, even if you turn completely into atoms, how would you escape? Even bits of the universe get lonely, I'd imagine. Hmm. So I I don't know what else to ask without hints, so Oh, Doctor, glad I caught you. I thought you might want to hear what Ben had to say. Quick catch up. I'm not sure Ben will be coming in for a while. He's still pretty shook up about finding the body. I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often in the line of work he's in. Anyway, he said he found the body at exactly 20 minutes past 10. For some reason, the first thing he did was look at his watch. That's all he'd say before he'd shut down. The police weren't very talkative either. Huh. So I think Jaya must be my assistant? Yes. Ben found Dr. Decker's body on Valentine's night in his office. In your office. <clears throat> yes, you know, the 14th of February, the day of love, or remembering a massacre, whichever's more you. <laughs> Jaya, <laughs> you're a little intense for me. I wouldn't say we were best friends, but we did spend a lot of time together. There's only two of us that work here. I'm sure we'll become friends too, Doctor. Mm. Just try not to get murdered. <laughs> Should I worry about being murdered? That's a good question. I just wish I knew the answer. Menacing? Sorry, 
Didn't you know? Ben's one of the night shift cleaners. I'm sure he's got some tales he could tell. The police wanted to know what I was doing Valentine's night, you know, when the body was found. I was at home, all on my lonesome. So I guess that makes me a suspect. Yeah, well. Huh. I think the police want you to make a short list of suspects, or maybe even find the killer. You're seeing all the patients that were on the books when he was killed. There was no forced entry, so they think it might be someone he knew, or someone who had access to the office. Yeah, like little old me. Do you think I'm a suspect, Doctor? Absolutely. I'd like to help, but I don't know anything about that. Oh, well, I wasn't expecting that. I suppose everyone's a suspect at the moment, even you. They did mention I needed grief counselling, though, and I said you'd sort me out. I know you didn't agree, but I thought I'd let you know. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Okay. Okay, so how was he? I don't know exactly, but a stabbing of some kind. We'll be getting the autopsy through at some point. I'll, I'll let you know when. I didn't see it myself, so I don't know. But I heard it was a bit of a mess with all the blood and everything. You know, they have people who clean up after such things, though, so you really can't tell, can you? So don't worry. That's a new chair. <laughs> All I know is the police took his chair. Forensics, I suppose. Okay, was he killed in the chair? He was stabbed, so that's quite a personal thing to do. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it was one of the patients who had a problem with the treatment they were getting. I'm just surmising. If you're unhappy enough to kill your therapist, they're probably not doing a very good job. <laughs> that delivery, what in the world? I wasn't really in his social circle, so I don't know if he had any friends. In terms of enemies, I heard things get heated in his office sometimes, but I won't name any names. Well, that would be incredibly helpful if you did. Susan. Annabelle, Melissa, there are some names, but they're not names of anyone I know. <laughs> you are being very unhelpful. Sorry, Doctor, I can't help you there. That, that's the problem. <laughs> so that right there, you see? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Dr. Decker was doing here, and my services weren't required that evening. He'd often stay late, though, so it wasn't that unusual. Hmm, okay. So I've got a green dot, that means she said all that she needs to say, so... I'm having a loop day. Buh? Okay. So it's one-on-one -on -one now. Uh, Zach asked if Jaya was my first green. Yes, I didn't get green on any, on any of the others. Um, He's having a loop day. It's a do-over day? You won't remember. What's the name of your assistant again? Uh, her name is Jaya. You didn't know that yesterday. Can you remember where I met Hannah? Uh, you met her at school. Well done, Doctor. Yeah, we met at secondary. Wouldn't it be funny if my day loops if you fail to get a question right? Huh, um, 
Jala asked if I decided about their psychoses last session. There was only there was only one that I missed. There, there, there was only one that I didn't didn't decide on because <laughs> excuse me, I didn't know what what continuing meant. No, no, we played that game. Why is the video different? Uh, I suppose it's funny for you. You won't remember. Anyway, I think I'll probably head home. This isn't helping. Huh. I'm having a loot day. This is good. I like this quite a bit. It's a do-over day. You won't remember. What's the name of your assistant again? Her name is Jaya. Hmm. I suppose you did remember that yesterday. <laughs> yeah. You remember where I met Hannah? Oh, I'm going through the loops too. Yeah, at secondary school. It's been fun, but... I've got a pill. Okay, what's this pill do? Dr. Decker gave me this pill. He told me if I took it, I'd never have another loot day. It's a big pill. It's got a small skull and crossbones on it. Should I take the tablet, Doctor? <laughs> it might be ecstasy. Yeah, take it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> See you on the flip side. Mom? Did he say mom? I'm having a loot day. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it's a do-over day. You won't remember it. What's the name of your assistant again? <laughs> Well done. Can you remember where I met Hannah? You met her at school. Yeah. Oh, great. I am so into this. Is there anything you can say that's going to break this loop for me? Tell me about your mom. I'm not sure that's the answer I'm looking for. I'm not sure that's the answer I'm looking for. I never mentioned a pill this time, or a tablet. What the hell is going on here? Are you reliving my days? <laughs> Something somewhere has changed since you arrived. Like some kind of sim theory. Sim theory? What? Oh, sim theory. It's a thing some professor believes we could be living inside a computer simulation and someone is controlling us and there are millions of these sims and someone somewhere behind a keyboard is just causing havoc i'm starting to think you have that keyboard doctor <laughs> don't answer that i don't want to know <laughs> Oh, this is so cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yay. At midnight each day. On Valentine's night. Time as you know it freezes. 20 minutes past 10. Keep up, Doctor. I think we're going to smother her in her sleep. I'm a grave digger, Doctor. I was at home. David is my husband. All on my lonesome. Stabbed him with a steak knife. Nothing changes. I'm a qualified angel of death. <laughs> when I'm dancing. Get this day over and over. Hilda. I don't care. I don't think she's got long. And Laurie just... Naked on the beach. Hannah. Is that it for today? Wonderful. Mm. Deja vu. Are you sitting in exactly the same place I left you last night? Oh, that's where it all starts, Doctor. 
Hmm. Anyway, do you think you can fit me in today? Looking at the diary, it's just the usual suspects, and you must be getting sick of them already. I've got this for you, too. It's some more footage from Professor Alderby that was hiding away. Who's Professor Alderby? Well, come find me if you need anything. Okay, can I... Weird, who's writing in these notes? Is that Jaya too? Huh. So I've Not got clues now. Course. The faculty thinks I've gone loopy, like some kind of spongy Mobius strip. That's why I'm here, isn't it, Dr. Decker? Him, God, the great old one, the elder God, Cthulhu, however you address him. Listen to me, you're not listening. It's your only bloody job. Well, let's call him God. He creates this world for his amusement, something he can play with and occasionally alter to suit his mood. God loves chaos, but something goes wrong. Man and woman evolve. What was once chaotic becomes well, more ordered. Without chaos, he has less power. When there's too much order, he becomes impotent. So he needs to instill chaos again. And do you know how he does this? No, and yes, but you're being too granular. He needs chaos so he can return, and the only thing stopping him is you. Not just you, you and people like you, psychiatrists, doctors, nurses, anyone who is caring for people who are losing their sanity. You have no comprehension how important your job is, do you? He doesn't need your version of insanity to spread. He needs chaos. It's not the same. It's just a means to an end. They're not all cultists, unfortunately. Once you see the truth, it's hard not to spread chaos yourself, to cause further insanity and harm your own. I doubt it. But can I make you question your reality? Definitely. But in doing so, I would be promoting more chaos. On the basis, the central component of our universe is Chaos. Science can only document a perception of the chaos at any one given moment in time. As by definition, chaos is unpredictable from one moment to the next. Which means that at any given moment, we can choose to alter our perception of the world, no matter how much chaos that would cause. In 10 seconds time, there will be no gravity in this room and we will float. Three, two, one. You think nothing happened. Where's your glass, Doctor? Oof. Huh. This is going in a really cool direction. Huh, okay. Lacey and Jasmine are new, I think. I'm Lacey Hendricks. So you don't know about me then? Uh, no. Yes, Jala, I am happy that you uh, nudged me into playing this. Where to start? My next door neighbor in Jobson Hill, where I live, she was murdered. <coughs> and they diversion burgled her. But she was wise to it and started calling the police. They slit her throat with a bread knife. So I started a neighborhood watch. 
Neighborhood Watch? It was me and Agnes. Everyone else thought we were overreacting. If they want their throats cut, that's up to them, living in their bubbles. But Agnes... Poor Agnes. What about Agnes? She went missing, and still is. And that's what people think. But it's not the truth. Hmm. It killed them. It. it looks normal enough. A smartly dressed door to door saleswoman. I know because I heard my other neighbors shout at her No Jehovah's! They think anyone knocking is a Jehovah. But she said she was selling double glazing. Wait, that's the second time I've heard double glazing. I don't know. I didn't answer the door. Best not to nowadays. But I watched her go to Agnes's. Poor Agnes. She let her right into her house. Well, maybe she needed double glazing. I could only see the silhouette. It turned from a person into a well. It looked like, I guess you'd call it a, a Medusa. Snakes for her face. And Agnes just fell to the floor. A few minutes later, the woman left, smiling like the cat that got the cream. That was the end of Agnes. Hmm. I saw it with my own eyes. What more proof do I need? You're starting to sound like Dr. Decker. He didn't believe me either. I didn't have much luck with him. Like I said, he didn't believe me. He thought I was having a, a, a hallucination caused by the stress of my neighbor being so brutally murdered. But... <laughs> Where is Agnes though? I haven't found her, have they? Have they? She went on vacation. Here is a postcard. They drank my ties. That's not really a question I can answer. <laughs> Let me check my notes. I was at Henley Church. They had a service that ran right up till midnight. For us less fortunates without a love in their life. Well, now. Mm -hmm. Do you have someone, Doctor? Do you have a love in your life? Garden Club. You should come with me one night. It's a lovely way to meet new people. You lost a love? I suppose I could tell you, but I don't have all the gossip. Weird. Um... What? That can't be possible! Is that true? What don't I know about it then? When was this then? Is she alive? Her useless husband is. Don't know much about him, other than the fact that he looks at me like I'm six foot under every time we meet. He doesn't seem too bothered she's gone missing either. He did at first, when the police were crawling around. But now they've gone, that stopped. If I hadn't seen that thing eat her, I'd... No. He's a weasley little man who spends far too much time in his garden. It's probably like the National Trust back there. The constant digging and building, pruning and sawing. 
What is he building in there? What a thing to say. Why would you say that? I kept watching the front door after that saleswoman had left and nothing. <coughs> she didn't leave. And you can't get out the back since the council sold the garage block. Ron's a gardener, not a killer. Unless... <laughs> okay, I must watch. Agnes said Ron was laying the foundations for a new greenhouse. You don't think... Did he bury her under the foundation? I need to call the police. I, I need to call them now. Um. <laughs> but they won't listen to me. I tried to tell them about the monster, but they didn't believe me. They won't believe me about this, I promise you. Please, could you call them, Doctor? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Doctor. Now give me a pen and I'll write down the details for you. Don't you want to know why Dr. Decker called me the leech lady? Mm. Um, okay, so I've earned her trust. That's good. He said that I leech thoughts from people. Suck them right out of their heads. Hot. And I can put thoughts in there, too. I'm not that clever, though, am I, Doctor? I mean... It's not as if I was having an affair with Ron and Agnes was in the way and needed to disappear. So I made this story up. I mean, what do you think I do for a living anyway? I assume some kind of cat scrapbook advice columnist. No, I can't really answer that. <laughs> Doctor, you're so good. We're going to get on just fine. So she sells double glazing, which I assume is some kind of window thing? Let's see a hint. No. Yeah. Okay, so let's see what Jasmine's all about. I'm Jasmine. I don't come in that often. What happened to Dr. Decker? We had a display in the gallery based on Love Conquers All, so I had to work. Mainly it was a collection of giant hearts sat on things, but I ran into another patient, Bryce. Hmm. I'd never really spoken with him before, but he's quite an art critic. I couldn't get rid of him until I finished work at 11. There's actually another guy who takes over on the night shift. I'm not sure if he kept talking to Bryce, though. Providence is open 24 hours. I forget which one is Bryce extra hour guy. Yeah, I could see him being tiresome. Um. Hmm. There's not much to tell. I knew he was a patient here. I'd seen him in the waiting room a couple of times. He likes art and talking and talking and looking down here instead of up here. Hmm. Breast thirsty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's your when problem, lady? you see a painting, it, it stands still. When I see one, it's moving. Like a mini film. Like little vines. But when there's a person in the painting... Huh. Vines. They watch me, normally disapprovingly. Somebody else talked about paintings watching them. Because they don't think I know how to appreciate art, because I'm too young. 
while you're just being insecure. Yes, of course. Otherwise I wouldn't be working in an art gallery. I love art. I love paintings. Like I said, they move for me. Hmm. When I want them to normally. When I want to really get inside what's going on. But some paintings... I can't stop. Huh. So do you just, like, do a long press on them? I've been working on portraits at home, outside work. But my paintings aren't so good. Nowhere near Providence standard. I painted a man, Dorian. You know, after Dorian Gray. Hmm. Thank you for subscribing, Ophelian. I wanted to try and capture someone aging, so I divided the face into thirds and painted a boy, his father, and his grandfather in each third. Hmm. It was hideous. <laughs> and it started talking to me. Oh. That is such a cool idea for a story. Oh my god. That I'm ugly. That Aww. I have no talent. Nothing will become of me. Is that true, Doctor? <laughs> no. I've... I hear it so many times with that wretched painting. It's in my head. But thank you. Zach says this shit legit freaks him out. Um, yeah. Go ahead, swear. Swear all the time. I swear on here. You can swear too. He was shy. And then less so. Burf? When I told him about my problem, he told me to set fire to it. Okay. No, sorry. So you didn't burn it? Yeah, he could have been more specific. I tried to set fire to <coughs> Providence. At that time, I thought the only way to fix my problem was to set fire to the entire art gallery. Several mm. paintings didn't make it. Luckily, my boss didn't press charges. The police did arrest me, though. She's an arsonist. Yeah, why didn't he press my charges? My boss, Petra. She's just lovely like that. Providence has gone through some tough times and I've only been there a year she invested her life savings and it's still not making any money such a sweet lady you'd do anything for her hmm <laughs> Frost Circus corrects me saying artsonist please Dr. Decker told me to burn it it's what? nothing to do with Petra wait No. Why are you saying that? I don't even know if Petra has insurance. Okay, so she says Dr. Decker told her to burn things. Is Dr. Decker that leprechaun that appears to Ralph Wiggum? Oh. When? How? <laughs> Sorry, you probably don't know, do you? That one episode where they get into the prison, Marge makes Bart be friends with him. Quimby smells like hot dogs. I really don't know. Sorry. The Simpsons is a popular show. The longest running sitcom of all time. It's quite strange that you are seeing this. I don't know. <sighs> okay, we will agree to disagree. Nope. <laughs> That's the only right answer to we will agree to disagree. <laughs> Okay. I already ripped up the painting. It screamed as I cut it. 
And now whenever Ooh. I close my eyes, I can see it, hear it. I need the tablets, Doctor. I need them. Oh, tablets. What tablets? The Timazapan, the sleeping tablets. The ones you gave me last time. That's... I didn't see you before. Beats me. Hey, Patches. Dr. Decker gave them to me. They helped. I know it's in my head. I know paintings can't talk. What's wrong with me, Doctor? Why do I do this? Thank you, Doctor. I'll think about that. And the prescription, please? <laughs> Yeah, totally. Chicken Riggies gets <laughs> classic drug-seeking behavior. Ouch. Decker was stabbed. I didn't really know him that well. I'm trying to remember what I was doing on Valentine's Day now. You already said. Huh, let's see. Oh, well, a grinder. Good. Pills, please. <laughs> uh... Tell me about Jasmine. Not something I know about. Huh. Do you like art? Nope. I've got nothing. Huh. There's something I want to tell you about. Something else that's wrong with me. I think I've been getting a bit out of control in my hour. <laughs> what have you been doing? I don't have anything to say to that. Well, you're the one who brought it up, so... When I first got the hour, I, I was shocked, obviously. It took me a while to work out that everyone was frozen and only I could move because I live on my own. What would you do, Doctor, if you had an hour where everyone was frozen? Go to a fairground? What is that? 250 questions asked. I would jerk it. So right. I don't really know about that. You should try it. I don't know. Come on, everyone does it. Cool kids. Especially. I have no idea what you want me to say. Crank dog. Sorry, Doctor, I dozed off there. <laughs> Got a bit of a fight club situation going on. Uh, let's see here. I did think, what good could I do other than catch up with work? I did see a woman who was having her purse snatched. <laughs> so I gave her purse back. And the crook, I placed him on a bus a few blocks away. I have no idea where it was going. She'd never really be able to thank me, so I took another picture. What? Uh, that is very creepy. No, sorry. You take pictures? No. Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Huh. Let's hear a hint. All right, well, maybe that'll be somewhere in here. I spent most of Valentine's Day at the art gallery. Well, the evening part, anyway. 
they had a display with the theme, Love Conquers All. I didn't get most of the paintings, but they were well done. <laughs> the words. Oh, geez, how can you tell? Come on, what? Possibly a relative of yours. Possibly a patient that died here. I'm not sure. She doesn't normally say anything. Wait, he sees somebody behind me. Huh. I dug the grave for Dr. Decker. I helped carry his coffin to the burial site. Do you know what? It didn't weigh enough to have a body in it. Why do you think that is? No, the coffin wasn't empty. There was something in it. A decoy, I'd imagine. Oh, is this Capgras syndrome? I'm guessing he was buried somewhere else, or cremated. Somebody somewhere didn't want his body going in the ground. Do you want to be cremated or buried, Doctor? Throw me in the garbage. I don't really know about that. Um... That's a good choice, Doctor. <laughs> Let's work for me. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Ha! That was just an example, Doctor. I'm sure you can come up with more exciting things to do than that. Um, let's see here. Yes, I would steal too. And I have stolen. I ran out of milk, so I thought I'd go to the local all-night shop and get some more. I was absolutely intending to pay, but when I got there, everyone was frozen. I thought about leaving money on the counter, but that seemed weird. The cashier would wake and suddenly this money would have appeared from nowhere. But I've stolen bigger things. Like bridges? Stadiums? I don't have anything to say to that. Mm, okay. Well, that makes me feel a little better. There's a young mother, divorced, who lives opposite me. Jessica. She's friendly and says hello to me, smiles. I've always wondered what she looks like. Naked. So one hour, I broke into her house. <clears throat> she was standing in her bedroom. I took it as a sign. I took off her clothes and... Oh boy. I took photos of Jessica when she was naked. When I'd stripped her. When she was naked and frozen. I didn't want to have to do it again, to strip her again. So I took pictures to remind myself what she looked like. That's wrong, <laughs> isn't it, Doctor? <laughs> um, yeah, yes, it is very wrong. I know. It's that bloody Dr. Decker. He made me this way. It's all his fault. Oh. Wait, why is like that? Like I said, I originally presented with depression. And everything was going well for a while. Then Dr. Decker changed. <laughs> he was easily distracted during sessions, like he wasn't listening. I'm pretty sure he wasn't listening half the time. I don't think he wanted to know about his patients anymore. But when he did give you advice... He told me to use my imagination, <clears throat> to make something up, to think something crazy, 
and it would become real. He told me to think of a way to get more time. So I did. But he pushed me. He made me think it. Um, what else have you stolen? Huh, okay. Yes, I suppose I've destroyed a few things whilst in the hour. In you the can be hour. the perfect supervillain. Nobody knows it was you. That wretched dig goes on 24-7. 25-7, if you ask me. <laughs> oh. Your patient, Nathan, caused quite a stir. He interrupted one of the female students all night, apparently. Made her miscategorize some findings going on about his dead girlfriend. It's amazing what you hear at the coffee machine. Well, I suppose that's a bonus. We're allowed to use their coffee machine while they're there. <laughs> Because you have to hope, don't you, Doctor? It's only the power of hindsight that made me realize how toxic it all was. And after a point, you go too far to be able to come back anyway. Did he offer you tablets? I have no idea what you want me to say. Tablet. Sorry, Doctor, I dozed off there. Hmm. I can't delete them. I don't know why. I haven't shown them to anyone else. Do you want to see them, Doctor? Um... No, I will not something I know about. Nope. I've got nothing. Huh. Okay, let's see somebody else. Let's try Claire. It's the anniversary of my parents' <clears throat> death today. I went to the lake house. I always go to the lake house anyway. But it's also where they died. Huh, so they died at the same place where your injured husband lives, where you tried to kill him, I believe? I stood for a while, looking across the water. It's peaceful there. It's the place that makes me feel the most. There was a girl there. By the lake. Uh, only about nine or ten. She was Weird. fishing. If you can call it that, with one of those nets on a stick. Tell me more about the girl. I don't know why I talked to her. She looked sad. I don't usually talk to children. But she seemed different. Special. I'm allowed to talk to her, aren't I, Doctor? Yeah, whatever. Good. It felt nice. I felt like I was being nice. I felt human. So I can find her and talk to her again, Doctor. <laughs> I don't... Um, yeah, why not? I'll look for her next time I'm there. David had been hunting again, and, well... She's seen some of the skins he hung around the lake house. Hmm... Animal skins. Um, David hunts, uh, then skins. It's horrible, really. Um, he's not really good at either job, so <laughs> the skins still have great lumps of bloody carcass hanging off them. I'm sure he'll get better with practice. <laughs> he's not good at either job, so he skins them mostly alive? David wasn't there. Or at least I didn't see him. I didn't go inside. Um... I forgot my key, and the spare was missing. Hmm. 
they died of carbon monoxide poisoning. I was staying at a friend's house, otherwise I would have died too. That's very convenient. Sorry, I don't know anything about that. The day Dr. Decker was killed, uh, I had a session with him in the morning at my usual time, 11 o'clock. That was the last time I saw him. Dr. Decker made me an offer that I couldn't refuse. I'll be taking it to the grave with me, though. As did he. Huh. I don't know. I suppose she just reminded me of me. I spent a lot of time alone as a child. She said she was trying to catch some strange creatures that she's seen in the water. What creature did she see? I don't know. Minnows, probably. Everything's strange when you're a child. Reasonable. It was 12 years ago. I was still very young. Too young to be an orphan, anyway. I had to toughen up quickly. Matt isn't the right word. David has always been there, in the shadows, on the periphery. I move in very exclusive circles. You tend to see the same faces. Weird. I don't move in any circles anymore. Those people were my parents' friends, not mine. Love? Yes. I suppose I always will. Valentine's Day night, I was at the lake house, <coughs> watching David, like I always do. He has trouble with his mental faculties and is getting worse. Yes. I watch him and make sure nothing bad happens. Where did you stab him with that steak knife? I don't know anything about that. Hmm. Perhaps you should be taking more notes. What were you doing at your friend's house? Do you think I killed my parents? <laughs> Maybe. Sorry. I don't know. Um, yes, I think you killed parents. Why? Because I stabbed my husband? <laughs> that doesn't mean I killed my parents. Hmm. Let's come back. See what's going on with the angel of death. I haven't had a great day, to be honest. Someone accused me of stealing from my patients, which I would never do. Plus, Hilda's getting worse. Hmm. Why do people accuse you of stealing? Um, no. That's not a question for me. Yes, I was looking at you. This? Well, it started with this. It's a locket. Alice, one of my patients, gave it to me before she died. Tell me more about Alice. Alice was one of my favourites. She never held back, spoke her mind about everything. But she had a wicked sense of humour. Hmm. What kind of jokes did Alice play? Eh, okay. What kind of humour? I don't know. Are you happy, Doctor? What? Um, I have a few... Oh, what? Um, I have a few other things. Um, a watch. A ring. 
One patient gave me uh, a little china bird. They're not valuable, just trinkets, really. Hmm, she mentioned somebody named Hilda before? Strictly anyway. speaking, all of the patient's belongings should be passed on to family members after they die. But Alice's son never visited. He didn't care about his mum. Why would he care about some worthless piece of jewellery? It just doesn't feel right to me. What do you think, Doctor? Nah, I think it's wrong, wrong to steal things. Like really? I don't see the harm. Alice wanted me to have it. You and Terry and all the other nurses just don't understand. <laughs> like... Hilda's the one I mentioned in our last session. She's dying. I can tell. I need to see her before it's too late. Mm. You don't want somebody else to rack up that point? To help her finish her unfinished business. People who are dying always have things they wish they could do before they go. We leave a lot of loose ends in our lives. We're very messy that way. Huh. Hilda wants to see her daughter. She's in Australia, so I'm going to have to use my talent. <laughs> I, I don't like the way you smile when you say talent. I can change my skin. What? What I look like. Oh, is she pretending to be other patients? I just um, hold their hand and ask them to imagine that the person they want to see is sitting right here next to them and I become them. It's how I help them move on. That's how I comfort them. Okay, Dr. Sleep. All right, what are we, huh? I only shift at work to help my patients. I don't have any interest in using it as a party trick or to deceive anyone. <laughs> okay. I've shifted a few times now. I honestly couldn't tell you how many. What do you shift into? Huh. Yes, I had a session with Dr. Decker on Valentine's Day. <clears throat> um, three o'clock, I think. But just a few hours later, he was... I still can't get over it. What can't you get over? Sorry, no. Mm. Um, actually, I had a hot date. It wasn't anything serious, just some guy I know. But it was a nice date. Different to what I'm used to. Who did you go on a date with? His name is Max. Max. He's really sweet, but I don't see a future between us. He's not really my type. Did Dr. Decker know about your talent? It was um, very traditional, old fashioned, you know? Dinner at a nice restaurant. Then we went for a little walk along the pier, held hands, had a bit of a kiss. Then he called a cab and I went home alone. Uh, what is your type? I think we've got a bit off track. Maybe you should check your notes. <laughs> Don't condescend to me, please.
think it was about 11 when I left Max. I'm sure you could check with the taxi company if you really wanted to, if you think I need an alibi. She's smiling too much when she says that. Of course, it was Terry that accused me of stealing. One of the other nurses. She's actually trying to make out that I'm some kind of HSK. HSK? What? Healthcare serial killer. You know, like those nurses that kill loads of their patients. Yeah, all those. I'm surprised you haven't heard of it. Anyway, because a few of my patients have died on me, and some of those patients have given me gifts, Terry thinks it means that I've been killing them off. <laughs> I've known Max a couple of years, but this is the first time we've been on a date. I don't think he's boyfriend material. No, oh, BFM, yeah. Dr. Decker seemed fine on Valentine's Day. He seemed to be in a good mood. It didn't seem like anything was bothering him. Weird, that contradicts. Sorry. Yeah. That contradicts what other people said. I can sense it, you know? It's like when you're outside and there's a sudden change in the light or the air feels different and you know it's going to rain. It's like that. I always know when one of my patients is fading, even before the doctors know. Their energy changes. Energy. It sounds silly when I put it into words. Oh, I sound like my mum. Tell me more about your mother. <laughs> my mum's a nightmare. I said she was into all this new age stuff, right? Well, you're an herbalist. So she thinks she can tell me what I should be doing all the time because she got a message from her spirit guide that said I'm not eating well <clears> or I'm not getting enough sleep or I'm not looking after my inner moonbeam or whatever. <laughs> drives me nuts. But she's my mum. I love her, so I have to take it. Hmm. Who is her spirit guide? I'm not sure about that. What? You seem happy. You have a very positive energy. Hmm. Oh yeah, she could sense the unfinished business. Did Dr. Decker have any unfinished business? Dr. Decker almost certainly had unfinished business. He didn't know he was going to die. But it's too late now. That's why I have to help Hilda while I can. Huh. Let's talk to Mariana. I haven't been back to the beach since our last session, and no blackouts, new doctor, and new hope. You're much better behaved than Dr. Decker. Dr. Decker misbehaved? He went out for drinks, didn't you know? He said it was a breach of something or the other, but... I can be pretty persuasive when I want to be. <laughs> Please don't do that. That's like when Lucille Bluth tries to wink. It was Valentine's Day. What? I drink on special occasions. Huh. <laughs> Were you lying? I don't drink. Only sometimes, like a, a social drinker, like a social smoker. They don't smoke either. Yeah, they smoke. That's why they are a blank smoker, an adjective smoker. 
<laughs> Why did you have we drinks with your Valentine's psychiatrist? Day. Neither of us had dates, so I just suggested we go out together. You know, rather than just sit in with nothing to do. He'd been acting a bit strange anyway, and I thought he could do with a break. I know, it's pretty hard to believe, isn't it? I feel pretty ugly. But I think I have a nice smile. Lots of people find me attractive, but I've seen something truly beautiful. It makes me feel dull by comparison. What beautiful thing did you see? I have a recurring dream where I find something beautiful in the sea. But I don't know you that well yet, Doctor. Let's wait a while before I tell you my most intimate secrets. Sorry to cut in, Doctor. <laughs> I've just had a phone call from a solicitor. Ben's trying to sue us for nervous shock. Should I go and see him to talk it out, or should I find a solicitor to represent us? Sorry to be pushy, I just think we should act quickly before it's too late. Uh, well, just let me know. <laughs> Please don't interrupt me with, with a patient. Um. Wouldn't you like to know? Is our session up now? I was with Dr. Decker until about nine o'clock. I remember getting an Uber. It was expensive and the driver was annoying. I saw one of your patients, actually, the nurse, when we drove by the pier. She was with someone. I don't think she saw me. Huh, I wanna... That's not really important. Ask me something else. Huh. Dr. Decker dated his patients. That's not good behavior, <clears throat> is it? No, it's very bad behavior. I think her name was Scarlet. One of his patients, an older woman. I guess that's how he liked them. I haven't been back to the beach since our last session. I kind of missed it. Uh, how often did you go on dates with Dr. Decker? Huh. You do something a lot, you're gonna miss it. I suspect I'll go back there soon, but helped with the blackouts not going to the beach has helped with the blackouts I'm really interested to hear more from him hello again doctor I had a bit of a shaky loop incident but let's not talk about it. Yesterday, I set fire to Hannah's clothes in the garden. I, I just wanted the day to move forward. I instantly regretted it. And lo and behold, here we are, a new day. Hannah's clothes are piled of ashes. Movie length, what? Oh, I played for two hours. Yeah, I suppose that's about right. I've 
kept almost all of her stuff as she left it. Just the clothes. I decided to burn those yesterday, so here I am. Hannah loved clothes. Every season, she'd donate her entire wardrobe to some charity or another, and only buy stuff she loved. I was left with winter. I don't even know what her favourite season was. Does it matter? What's your favourite season, Doctor? I thought you'd be an autumn person. That means you're supposed to be grounded and productive. And you like your space. Huh. Weird. Dr. Decker felt that Hannah was holding me back. The memories of Hannah. In his opinion, I was holding on to the past. So I guess he cursed me. <laughs> it was even a thing. Uh, do you believe in curses? Sorry, no. I like winter. Being snowed in with Hannah. Just the two of us. That's paradise. <laughs> yes, Dr. Decker, curse me. I don't really want to talk about it, but let's just say I blame him for the way I am. Can you give me some advice, Doctor? <laughs> I don't know. This isn't exactly in the DSM. I've been trying to think how I can get past today. I've come up with a couple of choices. I could set fire to Hannah's photographs. I've got them in Dropbox, anyway. But setting fire to the clothes did the trick. Or setting fire to a rocking chair. She sounds like an old lady, but she loved that rocking chair. Which I've not sat in since. Which one do you think's best? <laughs> Set fire to the rocking chair. I never like the way it moves forwards and backwards. Yeah. Forwards and backwards. That's both of the ways, yeah. Okay. Also, hi, Nive9. I was at Henley Church on Valentine's Day visiting Hannah's grave. It's the anniversary of her death. Her parents wanted a huge funeral with all the trimmings. Hannah would never have come for it. But it does give me somewhere to visit. I got to write the epitaph. I have written an epitaph? We walk alone without our angel. Okay. How many fires have you set? I don't know. Do you like fire? Fire is very primal in terms of energy. Maybe <laughs> if I burn something, my days will keep rolling. Although I'm not sure you're supposed to encourage arson in these sessions, Doctor. <laughs> um... Uh... Let's see here. What did Dr. Decker say about Hannah? Hannah never met Dr. Decker. She did donate to his charity once, though. Dr. Decker had a charity? Hannah was forever giving <clears throat> to charity. Her things, her time, our money. I actually suggested a charity that Dr. Decker mentioned called Mind Stretch Outreach. What is, was that mind stretch outreach? Mind stretch outreach arranges programs for gifted children. It's for poor, clever kids who can't afford private education. It's not much of a charity, I guess, but it certainly ends up with a lot of clever people who are thankful to the people running it, which in this case is Dr. Decker. Wait. Dr. Decker ran Mind Stretch Outreach. I think Dr. Decker set up Mind Stretch Outreach so that he could influence the minds of children at an early age, getting them to believe they could be anything they wanted to be. Since his death, it's been disbanded. <laughs> no more minions of Dr. Decker. <laughs> huh. Let's see, what else is there? 
I left Henley Church about 11 o'clock on Valentine's Day. I was talking to an archaeologist who said it then covered some fossils resembling a strange cephalopod-like creature. Strange place to find an octopus, really. No. What? Do you think I've got something to do with Dr. Decker's murder? Maybe you should ask your assistant who Decker saw that day. It's a sea creature, like an octopus. I suppose they find dinosaur bones everywhere. Just because we're on land now doesn't mean millions of years ago this place wasn't at the bottom of an ocean. Why did an archaeologist talk to you? Can't help you. Sorry. Huh. I'm not religious. But when I wrote Hannah's epitaph, I knew her parents would want some acknowledgement of the great bearded one. But she was an angel to me. She was an angel to everyone. I've been alone since Hannah. I can't imagine anyone ever replacing her. Not that I've looked. Do you think I should look for someone else? Okay. Fine. I'll try. I'm not really sure what I'm looking for, though. Just sign up to Tinder and start swiping. Maybe it's just company I'm missing. Although I don't really want any. It was... it was a missed call. It was Valentine's Day, so I wasn't in the mood for conversation. Did Dr. Decker call you? Huh. She was an angel to everyone. We walk alone without our angel. She was interested. Maybe I misread. Maybe she was just being kind. I, I suppose most women wouldn't enjoy me talking about my dead ex for hours. Weird. She's dead. Thanks for bringing that up. <sighs> Let's see what Jaya has to say. So, should I get a solicitor, or shall we try and talk it out with him? Yeah, no, I so think we should get a solicitor. I know the perfect firm. I'll do it all. Don't don't worry about it. And that's why we've got insurance for these kinds of things, anyway. But the cheek of it. What's wrong with Ben? So, should I get a solicitor? Oh, weird. Hey, you. Thanks for helping me with this grief thing. I'm not sure I have it, though. Hmm. Oh, I don't really know where to start. I feel a bit numb. Maybe we should just talk about him. Huh. It hadn't even been a year. He was a quiet, solitary man. A good listener, as I suppose you'd need to be. His confidence did grow as time wore on, but that's what you'd expect after you'd fitted in. I mainly miss our chats. He used to work late with me and tell me things about the patients, things that I probably shouldn't have heard, but did. <laughs> A, what do you think of the patients? He was a nah, great, perhaps you shouldn't say. gravely unethical you can ask man. Me. Go on, I'll tell you what I think. <sighs> okay. We'd work late together on all sorts of things. He was preoccupied with finding patterns in patients, 
trying to find some kind of order. Trying to find order. Did Dr. Decker like order? Learn more about elderly. I don't know. Huh. On Valentine's Day, Dr. <clears throat> Decker had a session with Claire Castleford at 11 and that nurse, Elin, at 3. Everyone else cancelled. You should see this place Christmas Eve. I was at home though, so I don't actually know who came in. Dr. Decker did phone and ask me for Nathan's number. Which is a bit strange. Wait, wait. Oh. Mainly he was searching for a common experience the patients might have had. That's what led them to his office. He'd study everything, even the referral letters. Yes, letters, parking tickets, holiday destinations. You know, I find those referral letters. He was sure there was a pattern in them. How do you feel about order? I'm not trying to hide anything. I just don't know. Hmm. Mariana is a special girl. You know, there's something about her that just makes you want to follow her. Maybe that's what a trendsetter looks like. Huh. I think Bryce has a lot of misdirected anger. I don't think I like him that much. You know, sometimes when things overrun, he's outside waiting for you and he stares at me as if he's undressing me with his eyes. Yeah. You know, he's not the first person that's done that, but still, you know, it feels worse coming from him. Claire seems to be shaken by something. You know, I offer her drinks every time she comes in, but she always refuses them. <laughs> It's as if she just wants to come in, get her session over with, and then run off to do something else. It's a bit rude, isn't it? What kind of drinks do you have in this office? Elin seems like a lovely person. I'm not really sure why she's here. Huh. Oh, I just want to cuddle Nathan all up. He's such a mess. He's always in the same clothes. You know, he barely talks to me, though. It's the same hello every time. He reminds me of Tom. Oh, uh, wait. Tom was a quiet mess, like Nathan. Youngish in his early 20s. He taught piano, but he did have a strange hobby. Why do you have glasses now? Who is Alderby? Professor Alderby is a trustee. Did I not mention that? A trustee of what? I think I'm going to get into trouble now. Have you ever heard of secret shoppers? Well, Professor Alderby posed as a patient to test Dr. Decker. It's just a thing that he does. I'm sure he'll come and visit you at some stage, so please play along. Is that... that doesn't seem right. Huh. Tell me about... what is that? Mindscape... Navigator. I don't know about that, Doctor. Tell me about Dr. Decker's charity. I don't know anything about that, I'm afraid. Ah, <sighs> man. Um. Fuck. Who was it that told me about that? Was that her?
Mind Stretch Outreach. Okay. I think you might be barking up the wrong tree there. Huh. Tom liked to base jump. That's basically falling from a huge building or mountain and pulling your parachute before you hit the ground. He started to think he could fly. Dr. Decker tried to talk him out of it, but Tom had to prove his point. So one day, Tom decided to base jump without a parachute. Can you guess what happened? <laughs> He did die. He was hit by a rock from further up the mountain. He never got to fly. Nathan thinks he knows what his problem is too, but if he's not careful, he'll get hit by that rock. I wish I'd said goodbye. Hmm. I wish I'd said goodbye to Dr. Decker. It was so sudden. You know, here, then gone. He resigned anyway, but that's not the same, is it? Wait, he resigned? Dr. Decker resigned shortly before his murder. No, it's sad, but doctors come and go and only poor Jaya remains. I've got his resignation letter somewhere. You know, I do all the hiring and firing around here. Well, Professor Alderby and the Trust technically do that. Weird. She was cuddling him like he was six. He's 25. Most of the patients are suspects, according to the police. Almost all the patients are referred, and some of them are privates, but Dr. Decker didn't introduce any of them. Weird. Wayne, okay. Huh. So you watched the tapes, huh? Ah, gold star for you. <laughs> so I just mentioned Cthulhu. It smashed. So the glass smashed in the video. Huh. Doctor Al Derby about the gods. Everyone has to believe in something, don't they, Doctor? How do you feel about chaos? Nobody likes chaos, Doctor. We're supposed to be restoring order, don't you think? Yeah, that's... That's reasonable. Hmm. Weird. Let's take a look at the uh, at the resignation letter. Simple enough. Wait, so he resigned three days before he passed. Huh. This practice is owned by a trust. They make all the money and leave me to make all the decisions, which generally means making lots of money. I headhunted Dr. Decker. And you? Weird. Okay. How did you find me? I can't help you with that. Sorry. What about patient confidentiality? Oh, don't be such a... 
It's just between us two. Let's see, Bryce, I want to... This guy's real weird. Well, I guess I don't want to mind too much for hints. I'm real curious, though. Okay, good night, Jala. What did Elin say then? Oh, that's right. She was on a date with somebody named Max. Thank you. Thank you, Dijon. I've got no idea what you're talking about. Sorry. I don't know, the parser's messing me up here. Elin seems like a lovely person. I'm not really sure why she's here. Wait, okay, so she mentioned boyfriend material. He's my therapist. I would just be wrong. about families I think our mums <laughs> I've probably spent far too much time talking to Dr Decker about my mum what did Decker say about his mom sounds like Decker and his mum had a few issues that's what I liked about Dr Decker it wasn't just him asking me questions and analysing me he talked about himself as well Huh. <laughs> Frost Circus says that I am introducing chaos by spelling it M O M. <laughs> Sorry. We speak American here. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think that at this point, I would just be mining for hints, and it's all disconnected. So I'm going to do just one more with Nathan, because I'm curious about him. 
Why does he think the children were minions? It just felt like he was growing this child <clears throat> army of intelligentsia. <laughs> child army? Pass. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, I'm gonna continue. Although I do need to... Yeah, I need to go to bed here soon, so... Uh, you know what? Instead of going to the next chapter, I'm just going to leave it here. <laughs> Thanks for waving at me, Nathan. Cool, I'm gonna go to bed. I'll be back tomorrow night, maybe to finish this. Uh, maybe not. I might extend into a Sunday sesh. Take care, everybody. If you're watching, you probably know what to do. Follow, subscribe, Patreon, all those things. Take care. This is really neat. I like this game quite a bit. Um, yeah. All right. Well, take care. Uh, have a wonderful weekend if I do not see you again.